Did you know that the Russian dubbing actor of Shrek was recognized as the best Shrek of all time? DreamWorks loved the Russian dubbing so much that they want to replace Mike Myers in the future Shrek films. How did Fiona actually survive in a castle without food? How many memes this cartoon create? And why Shrek was ahead of his time? I've collected 113 reasons why Shrek is an iconic cartoon. So please subscribe right now because this video is... Fairy Tale Tune ended up being the official unofficial title theme for DreamWorks. The melody was in most intros for all 20 years. And when the studio updated it, Fairy Tale played, of course. Once upon a time there was a lovely princess. Enchantment upon her of a fearful sort could only be broken by love's first kiss. She waited in the dragon's keep for her true love and true love's first kiss. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. This is a perfect introduction because in 40 seconds we were told everything we needed. The curse of the princess, Shrek's attitude to all this fairy tale stuff, an important hint at the backstory with the fairy godmother, and a very clever foreshadowing of the finale of the story on the last page. The whole kingdom celebrated on their wedding day. And all this introduction is in the form of a book of fairy tales. Because Shrek is, no matter how you look at it, a fairy tale. Regarding the fairy godmother, her image was designed during the first part. And they wanted to add it in the cartoon, but in the end they abandoned this idea. So yes, Fiona was cursed most likely by the fairy godmother. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Some An iconic scene that has become a legend. This is probably the most famous toilet in the world of animation or cinema in general. Special thanks for the perfect track Smash Mouse All Star. We all know that initially this song was put on temporarily until they choose the better song. As a result, All Star was loved by the creators so much that they decided to keep it. And let me tell you right away the truth that is common to all films of this franchise. Shrek does not have bad music, you'll see. The scene itself shows stunning graphics for those times. Light, particles, animation of water and mud, and all these features were used for fancy texts. Either mud, mud on water, damn it, writing text with larvae. Believe me, I can't even comprehend how difficult is it to even imitate such an effect. There is also a rumor that animators actually took mud showers in order to better understand how to create such an effect in a cartoon. But it seems to me that this is some kind of baseless rumor. All links lead to some Reddit post and there are no proofs. The sole truth of this world I've found is that there is no truth. We skate is getting pretty thick. You're trying to keep out, just tell me that, Shrek. Ooh. Everyone! That's the way I like it and I'll never get bored. Contradictory action. The ogre himself puts up a sign, beware ogre. Firstly, it is a reflection of his conflict with the outside world, which will be revealed in a very important dialogue with Donkey and will end with their reconciliation. But at the same time, Shrek, on the contrary, wants to save misguided hunters from death, which may seem more humane than the humans themselves. Apparently, there is a lot more to ogres than people think. Attention to details. In a medieval setting, of course, the rooms are poorly lit due to the lack of electricity, and that is why people went outside to draw a plan. Very cool transitions. Beware ogre and ogre is wanted. People grab weapons, but then someone grabbed a spoon and you're like, wait, why does someone need a spoon? And it turns out it was Shrek eating. Fire in the fireplace, fire to kill the ogre. Alright, let's get it! <laughs> Well, actually, that it's would be... 
великаны куда страшнее. Давят из глазных яблок сок. Жар очень освежает. Назад, назад, чудище прочь. Let's switch to a moment of interesting history. Russian dubbing of Shrek was recognized as the best of all, even better than the original. This is a fact, as by accounts of dubbing people, they liked how Alexei Kogan, who is basically an IRL giant, made Shrek sound so effective and effortless. They even went so far as to recast Myers and voice sequels with Alexei Kolgon, giving him time to learn English. But because it would be pain in the ass for Kolgon to do so, Alexei had to decline. But yeah, give Russian dub with subs a try, it's genuinely very good. While the whole world makes the main characters beautiful and perfect, DreamWorks releases Shrek, where the main character is not cute and kind, whom everyone will love, but a terrible, ugly and vile ogre with not the best attitude. Fairy tale creatures? This kid is so small. A little wooden puppet. I'm a real boy! Take it away. The universe of fairy tales is already a cool idea. All characters are already familiar to every viewer. But what's even cooler is one huge banter on Disney and their romanticized cartoons. Where else on the big screens will you see Geppetto selling his Pinocchio for a couple of coins? An interesting fact, DreamWorks lawyers carefully monitored that there were no direct matches with Disney in order to avoid lawsuits. Saying just in case, the fairy tales themselves do not belong to Disney. The main thing was not to draw the characters alike. Olga! You in what army? Listen, you was really, really some back there. Go look at me! What am I? Little? No! An ogre! Doesn't that bother you? Nope. Really? Friendship between Donkey and Shrek is justified. Donkey is the only one who did not see a huge terrible creature in Shrek, but a brave and strong ogre. And this is not because Donkey is just a moron and does not see a clear threat, by no means. On the contrary, Donkey is smart enough, he realized that humans cannot be trusted. All fabled creatures and non-humans suffer at the hands of humans. Thus, Donkey is less afraid of the ogre than the humans. And, uh, I don't care what nobody is looking at that. I want to live in a place like that. That would be my home. What are you doing in my house? Hey! A dead broad off the table! Oh, no. What are you doing in my swamp? Iconic, what are you doing in my swamp? A useless fact that is not a win. They forgot to record this phrase. In the end, they had to fly to Mike Myers in New York and he recorded this phrase right in the car. To come here. By who? Lord Farquaad. Who knows where this Farquaad guy is? I do. I know where he is. One at all. Me, me. I'm gonna see this guy Farquaad and get you all off my land and back where you came from. One event set the plot in motion perfectly. Shrek's comfort was violated, hence the goal to go to Farquaad, hence the presence of Donkey, since only he knows where Dilok Castle is. What's funny is that the whole situation ended up making Shrek a hero to fairy tale creatures. This is the basis for future alliances and the finale itself. No, no. That's enough! Run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. In the gingerbread man! The authors are very clever at evading censorship. Medieval tortures are very terrible. Severed legs, suffocation. All of them were softened simply by replacing a person with a cookie. Also, it's a reference to a gingerbread man song. Run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man! Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Is this not the most perfect kingdom of them all? The design of all of the characters is excellent. For example, Farquaad is dressed in all red, because this is opposite color to green, that is Shrek and Fiona's dress combined. Fun rumor, they say Farquaad's face was copied from the ex-CEO of Disney, Michael Eisner. Well, technically, you're not a king. Thelonious. You were saying. What I mean is, uh, you're not a king yet. Princess Fiona. If you like. 
Fiona. Find someone. But I probably go... shouldn't mention the little thing that happens at night. I'll do it. Yes, but after sunset. Silence. A subtle hint to plot twist. That must be Lord Farquaad's castle. Uh -huh, I think maybe he's compensating for something. <laughs> nice, come on. Hey, look at this. This song is a parody of Disneyland attraction It's a Small World. <laughs> it's hideous! Oh, that's not very nice. It's just a donkey. One who kills the ogre will be named champion! Come on! Scenes where Shrek takes out half the army on his own have become classics of the genre. Shrek is a scientifically accurate cartoon. Fluid pressure depends on altitude. This is not only an exciting battle, but also a cool song. I have a better idea. Give you our champion! I'm already on a quest to get my swamp back. Go on this quest for me and I'll give you your swamp back. What kind of quest? Everything is extremely simple, but extremely genius. Shrek and Farquaad's goals clash, turning into an unexpected decision. As a result, not the knight will go after Fiona, but Shrek. I don't get it, Shrek. Why'd you just pull some of that ogre stuff on him, you know? I know what? Maybe I could have decapitated an entire village. Does that sound good to you? For information, there's a lot more to ogres than people think. Like onions. Oh, layers. They judge me before they even know me. Ogres. Have layers, onions have layers? The following dialogue reveals the character of Shrek even better. After all, he can really tear for Kuat and his people. But everything that we have seen before is finally revealed layer by layer. Shrek has always been decent and humane, who in the end decided to sacrifice his time and nerves just not to shed too much blood. Inconspicuous detail. It was in the morning that Shrek and Donkey arrived at Fiona's castle. The authors deliberately built such a timing so as not to get into Fiona's night transformation. Um, who, Shrek, did you do that? Believe me, Donkey, if it was me, you'd be dead. At such moments, you hardly notice that some of the backgrounds are drawn by hand. The animators did a great job. What large teeth you have! You must bleach or something, cause that is- Donkey and Dragon Clash. How will Donkey escape? The key is his best quality, talkativeness. But how does it help against the dragon? You're a girl dragon! That's it, an unexpected detail. A female dragon who will like his flattery. Wake up! What? But wait, Sir Knight! This beeth our first meeting. Romantic moment. But we have to stay for this moment or something! Uh -huh. The first appearance of Fiona and all her talks are only about a kiss. She does not keep a silent about this, because it is true love's first kiss that will stop the curse, and not because of the obsession with her prince. By the way, like the whole plot, Shrek breaks fable stereotypes without kissing the princess at the first meeting. I pray that you take this favor. As a token of my gratitude. In medieval times, women gave their beloved personal valuables, either a handkerchief or jewelry. After all, a man could not return from the battle, and they promised that they would definitely return the gift of their lady, which guaranteed their return. How many of these promises failed to return? And that's what Shrek did with Fiona's handkerchief. Recipe book for a dragon to cook the knights. By the way, there is a theory that Fiona survived in the castle by eating the remains of the knights in the form of an ogre, so it does make sense. Yeah, I don't know. Physical relationship. Not emotionally ready for a commitment of uh, this magnitude. Really? Is the... Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's just. The 
most epic Sakuga in the Shrek franchise. He defeated the dragon solo by coming up with a great plan. Just Think about it, you write the script and in the course of events you need to figure out exactly how Shrek will defeat the dragon. This is stupidly unrealistic, but the creators managed to convince all of us how strong Shrek is. And where would a brave knight be without his noble steed? Yeah, she called me a noble steed. She think I'm a steed. I'm a steed. Think I'm a steed. You're a, a stallion, baby! I would look upon the face of my rescuer. How will you kiss me? What? It's destiny. <laughs> you think that Shrek is your true love? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now remove your helmet. Ooh. Now! Okay! Oh, you're expecting Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Prince, Prince Charming. Prince Charming. Charming? <laughs> this is all wrong. I was sent to rescue you by Lord Farquaad. Well, then why didn't he come rescue me? Good question. I have to be rescued by my true love. This is very multi-layered dialogue. First, every time Fiona waits for a kiss, it will move due to specific events. At first, Shrek refuses not wanting to get close to Fiona. Now Fiona refuses to kiss the ogre. Then Shrek will doubt his feelings and so on and so forth. Each reason makes sense, because if the kiss had taken place too early, the spell would have been lifted and the ending would have come in the middle of the cartoon. Secondly, Fiona, without realizing it, predicts the future, saying But I have to be rescued by my true love. She still has no idea that this is exactly what happened. Say there's a woman that digs you, right? But you don't really like her that way. Now how do you let her down real easy so her feelings aren't hurt? Everyone knows what happens when you find your- <laughs> Hey! Again, excellent dialogues. Donkey asks about his situation with Dragon, but Fiona answers in the context of her relationship with Shrek. At the moment, Fiona flatly refuses to acknowledge Shrek. It is obvious, but we all know the ending. So what will make her fall in love with Shrek? Measuring when you see him tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> I need to find somewhere to camp now! An important detail that intrigues the viewer and puzzles Shrek and Donkey. A subtle hint of a plot twist. What are you gonna do when we get out of swamp anyway? We? Donkey, there's no we. The first thing I'm gonna do is build a 10 foot wall around my land. This whole wall thing is just a way to keep somebody out. You hiding something? Never mind, Donkey. You're trying to keep out? Just tell me that, Shrek. Who? Everyone! Getting somewhere. Oh, for the love of peace. I'm not the one with the problem, okay? It's the world that seems to have a big, stupid, ugly ogre. They judge me before they even know me. You know what? When we met, I didn't think he was just a big, stupid, ugly ogre. Yeah, I know. The strongest dialogue in the entire film. Just talking about plans for the future, Donkey again pokes the wound. And okay if Shrek just talk about his conflict with the outside world. But this problem is very familiar to Fiona, a dialogue to which we will return more than once. Again. An interesting detail. The story of the three bears appeared at the very beginning. Then we saw only the father bear and the cup. And by the end, we learned the fate of Mama Bear. <laughs> Kinda brutal for a cartoon, but okay. Farquaad has a parody of the painting The Bears of Venus above the bed. Also a painting of him defeating the dragon. But we all know that even this sword won't help him. Uh, show her to me. Show me the princess. E Okay, let's see what we're working with. Whoa. What's all this about? We kind of got off to a bad start yet. Got a big day ahead of us. Uh, well, there's no way to behave in front of a princess. Uh. You're not exactly what I expected. Maybe you shouldn't judge people before you get to know them. Yes, that's it! I asked what will cause the closeness of Shrek and Fiona. Well, Shrek's words last night turned the barrier into a bond. Shrek and Fiona are both cursed by their ogre appearance. Two oddballs who understand each other perfectly. Fiona subtly hinted to Shrek that she understands his misfortune. And another useless fun fact. Cameron Diaz accidentally burped during the recording. And in the end, they decided to leave it in the cartoon, because it fits the image of Fiona perfectly. 
Please let me introduce myself. Shrek breaks the rules of cartoons. Someone begins to sing for no reason, and instead of singing alone, they beat him up. Referencing the Matrix. Detailing for 2002 is stunning, even footprints remain after steps. There it is, princess. I guess we better move on. Sure. <laughs> I'm worried about Donkey. He doesn't look so good. No, she's right. You look awful. Who's hungry? I'll find us some dinner. I'll get the firewood. Something that we wouldn't believe when Shrek and Fiona first met is happening. Now the ogre and the princess are buying time before arriving in Duloc, so that they can spend more time together using the sick donkey as an excuse. What is this? A weed rat. Guess I'll be dining a little differently tomorrow night. Maybe you can come visit me in the swamp sometime. <laughs> I'd like that. I was wondering, are you... are you gonna eat that? No, 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 it's still early. Again, the kiss does not occur due to a specific reason. Shrek does not yet know that Fiona understands him like no one else. This point will be finished in reconciliation with the donkey, but this is later. Ah! Shh, I'm the princess, ah! it's me! This body. Plot twist. This explains all the antics of the princess. We have been hinted at this more than once. Been this way as long as I can remember. By night one way, by day another. This shall be the norm. Until you find true love's first kiss, then take love's true form. That's why I have to marry Farquaad tomorrow before the sun sets and he sees me like this. Brilliant story. The specific rules of the curse create an excellent outcome. Fiona must kiss Farquaad within a specific amount of time, at a specific time of the day. In the meantime, hide at night. Why wait? Let's get married today. Fiona again pronounces the ambiguous omen. Only my true love's kiss can break the spell. She thinks it's only coming, but it's already happened. And we all know this from the very beginning of the cartoon. Shrek also knows them. And Shrek? Well, you got a lot in common. Look at me, donkey. Who could ever love a beast so hideous and ugly? Princess and ugly don't go together. The moment with Eve's dropping on the wrong information is a test. Test of Shrek's feelings. Yes, this is all a stupid misunderstanding, but when there is a burning question, do Shrek and Fiona love each other? You need a specific check to make sure the viewer is convinced of this. This romantic walk to a cheerful song is not enough to convince us of true love. And following events will 100% complete the verse from the spell. Are you alright? Perfect! The deed to your swamp cleared out as agreed. I told you, didn't I? I live alone! I heard there was a secret court that David might not fall, the major live to babble. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It's a cold and it's a broken man. Shrek won't recommend bad music. This scene is strong with a very impressive screenplay technique. It is needed to show that by the end of the story, the achieved goal of the hero no longer matters. Shrek got what he wanted, the creatures left his swamp, finally a comfort. But Shrek does not feel a drop of joy. His inner world is broken, which is shown by the broken mirror that we saw at the very beginning. Donkey? Back off! No, you back off! This is my swap! How come you came back? Because that's what friends do! They forgive each other! She said I was ugly! She wasn't talking about you, she was talking about... Uh, somebody else. Well then who was she talking about? Uh -uh, no way, I ain't saying anything. Can you forgive me? Well, what are you asking me for? Why don't you just go ask her? The wedding! We'll never make it in time! Clearly lined up connections again. The wrong information that Shrek heard became the reason for reconciliation with the donkey, as well as the reason to rush to Fiona to find out the truth, and how the heroes get to Duloc before sunset. The relationship of the donkey and the dragon is also part of the plot, all the details are important. 
People are told what to do and when. And this is firstly a mockery of the powerful rulers and their hidden dictatorship. But secondly, a prepared reason for people to renounce the fallen monarch and support Shrek. Shrek, wait, wait, hey, wait a minute. Look, you want to do this right, don't you say, I object. Oh, I don't have time for this. I object. Again and again, the kiss is interrupted. Now it's just because of the banter over the wedding cliche. What do you know about true love? Well, I... Ogre has fallen in love with the princess! <laughs> the Shrek cartoon was ahead of its time. In the whole film, many social problems are excellently shown. Racism. An ogre. Social rejection of interracial love. She's a princess. And I'm an ogre. Marriage of convenience. Because he's just marrying you so he can be king. Body positivity. But you are beautiful. Strong woman. <laughs> Rules imposed by society. I'm a princess, and this is not how a princess is meant to look. All this was in Shrek before the mainstream. By night one way, by day another. Disgusting! Guards! I order you to get them out of my sight! And that makes me king! See? Oh my way if you have to! For you, my wife, Fiona, I'm locked back in that tower. <laughs> All right, nobody move. Uh. <laughs> Farquaad's death is as it should be. He sent a warrior to slay the dragon and deliver the princess. As a result, this same warrior stole the princess, and the dragon threw Farquaad himself, symbolically depriving him of the crown. I, I love you. I love you too. But I, I don't understand. I'm supposed to be beautiful. But you are beautiful. <laughs> Incredible ending, plot twist, and the most proper development of the relationship between Fiona and Shrek. The kiss finally took place. Her true love is Shrek. The book from the intro and the verse of the curse took on a full meaning. After all, it was the true love who saved her from the castle. Fiona and Shrek's relationship was tested. When Shrek and Farquaad saw the true form of Fiona, the selfish monarch immediately called her a freak, rejected her, and promised to lock her in the castle for the rest of her life. While Shrek Shrek fought with a bunch of knights just to save the princess. We truly believe in their love. Fiona's true form is a green ogre. This is a plot twist that no one expected, but it could not be otherwise. Her true form is this because her true love is Shrek. And every time Fiona hid before sunset, every time she cursed her appearance, she could not imagine that someone would call her beautiful like this. But it happened. Yes, that's it! If Fiona had heard these words back in the castle, she wouldn't have been hiding at night, and all of this wouldn't have happened. The theme of true love has unfolded. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. I'm not a trace. We have kids, Fergus, Farkle, and a little girl named Felicia. Felicia. I've always wanted to have a daughter named Felicia. And someday, you will. Final concert with a perfect song, although it was picked up only because of the lines I love was only true in fairy tales. The film began with a book of fairy tales and ended the same way. Shrek at the time saved the DreamWorks studio from going bankrupt, meaning Shrek literally decided the fate of such masterpieces as Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon, Guardians, uh, B-Movie and Megamind. Shrek not only destroys all enemies Sola, but also Sola changed an entire industry. Do we have time for bonus meme? Yes, we do! Fantastic! Bonus meme! Ah, that's a dead
than Oh, come on, Shrek. Who needs a map when you've got animal instinct? A short film made for a special Shrek 4D ride at Universal Studios. In 2003, 3D was only just coming out at the masses. And for that time, it was literally magic. I got it! I got it! You always wanted a puppy, but all you got was toast! No! Words about the puppy are a foreshadowing of a future gift from a fairy godmother. <laughs> a repetition of one of the funniest moments in Shrek's history. <laughs> what a crack up. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty symbolically repeated his fate even after death, falling off the wall again. Well, looks like Farquaad's still trying to compensate for something. I wonder what that could be. Oh, oh. now you wouldn't happen to have another carriage in your pocket, would you? Thank you. But some of us do have wings. <whistles> Even in a short film, the quality is not inferior to the cartoon itself. Dialects are on the same level. The idea to cause the dragon came from the situation with Onion. Hardwood, I know I seen you die in the first movie. Shrek was breaking the fourth wall before any of these Deadpools and Rick and Morris. Oh! You can go first. Stay. Yes, yeah. my girl. Plot twist, but everyone really believed that they were grabbed by a stone statue. Oops! Shrek is a scientifically accurate picture. It uses all tricks. It is generally a reference to Naruto. This is Red Dragon. We're going in. Woo! Wait! Now! Brilliant plan. The powers of the dragons are identical. It is impossible to defeat the doppelganger just like that. Therefore, you need to use differences as for weakness, namely the lack of elasticity of the stone. Fiona! Shrek! Together forever. With you as my spirit queen, I'll be king of the honor world. This short film is a natural continuation of the first part. A continuation of the honeymoon from the last shots. A continuation of Farquaad's goal to become king. Motivation, fights, animation, everything is done at the highest level. An interesting fact, there is an official comic that repeats the entire short film. In the beginning, it is shown how Farquaad found out about the honeymoon from Shrek's friends. The same information was played before the Shrek 4D session in the attraction itself. I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Let's go home and make some waffles! Waffles? <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> waffles, a reference to the first meeting of Shrek and Donkey. Ah, thank you! Ah, what do you know? Endless stories and in the morning, I'm making waffles. They will also be mentioned in Shrek the Holes and will finally appear in Shrek Forever After. Let the honeymoon begin! <laughs> The whole short film continued the first part and smoothly moved on to the sequel, but more on that in the next episode. What are you doing in my swamp?